مرحبا again هلا uh, since we don't have a lot of developers here this is going to be boring but yet it's a very important topic to know about this uh, amazing library or uh, framework uh, I'm going to talk about React and React Native. Who knows here uh, React or React Native or used React or React Native before? Very nice. Very good. Of course. <laughs> okay. <coughs> this is an introduction about React. Well, I'm not going to go deep in, in this uh, library, but I'm going to share why it's created and how you can benefit from using it as a developer or uh, as a business owner if you want to do uh, your own business or you want to hire a developer if they are a react developers it's how it's going to be benefit you as a business owner or a startup uh, founder react is a javascript library for, for you who knows uh, what is javascript uh, it's a programming language uh, it's a well-known programming language uh, it's mainly react is uh, created to build user interfaces to give you a, a, a quick uh, the history of React. React was created by Facebook engineers. كلهم كانوا موظفين بفيسبوك كان عندهم مشكلة. Uh, كانت كلها internally. كل ال ال they used it internally. They built it internally to to so, to solve some problems. As a developer, أنا أحمد محفوظ دالي أبغوش or any other developer, we share the same problems. For so. Facebook decided, or the, the team decided, uh, to share this solution they created internally and to open source it for others to benefit from this amazing library. A lot of big companies uh, out there are using React and React Native. Microsoft, uh, Wix, of course, Uber, if you know, uh, Lyft, and wor worldwide uh, companies. NBC, if you, uh, of course, you know NBC. Okay, this is a glitch in the, the slides. So uh, it's a new way to build interfaces. This is what is React exactly. So imagine this. This is a like button. Everyone knows what is this, صح? If I want to, trans to transfer the, the visual, the component, from the gray thumb, thumbs up to the blue one, when, someone, when a user clicks on uh, a button, Sabiqan, this is how we used to do it. We check if the user likes the, 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 the post, let's say, and then we check if it has the blue like. If it's yes, we remove the gray like and add the blue like. Else, we will do this, we will do the, exactly the opposite steps of what we did at the first place. This is the old way. Now, using React, we do it like this. It's way simpler, we focus on the, the user interface other than the logic of building the interfaces. It's a declarative way. So the user interface in general, when it comes to in, in React uh, library, it's a, a, the render of the state of our components. Okay, I'm going to talk about how React transitions between states. When we change something, when we change the, the state of a like button, if a, if a user like this uh, post or not. So imagine this. Actually, I think there's a problem here. This is supposed to be uh, an animated uh, slide, but I'll go through it briefly. To transition from the upper state to the, the lower sp state, liking the, the, the post, let's say, we only change one state, the like button state. We won't affect the comment or the share or any other component state in the, this component or this interface. So this is the beauty of React. It only, it, it only looks for the minimal changes happened in the user interface and do the rendering thing in, the, in, a, in something called the virtual DOM and then present it for uh, users. Exactly what I said. Calculate the smallest set of, of changes to do or to build the uh, interfaces. Another example also, if you want to change from the like state, we change our uh, first, we added the you like this, since you as a user like this post, we will change, we will add this text. We will change the blue like thumbnail or the icon from uh, gray to blue state. And 
of course, the like, it's, uh, also the text like will change from gray to uh, blue text. All right, any questions uh, for now? Great. Okay, so the UI is, is a, comp a, comp a composition of uh, components. We, ha we can have, uh, it's either one component or multi components in the same interface. This is another good thing in, uh, in React. Like this example, we have like one, two, three, four components in one section of the interface. The uh, number of likes and who likes this post, uh, the number of comments, of course, uh, the feedback section that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, and the like and comment uh, buttons. This is a code example. I'm not going to uh, bore you with it. With Thank you. It's a, a quick example showing how can we can have multiple components in one screen. Can you click on? And uh, as a conclusion of what is React, React, it's very easier to learn as a, a library or a framework to use in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, development. It's faster development. And of course, as you saw, it's list code, ri writing codes, and more reliable than other frameworks and library uh, out there. I'm not comparing on anything. I am a developer. I use a lot of other, uh, let's call them uh, competitive uh, frameworks. But yet, to me, I enjoy doing React coding and uh, websites and applications. <coughs> All right. How to get started? If you're interested in learning React, there's a lot of resources out there to, to learn React. Uh, the documentation, we have it in Arabic, French, uh, English, of course. You can, the, the, it's well documented. And there's a lot of communities. It's, let's say it's number one or number two uh, active community out there. Uh, you can ask a lot of qu questions, online questions, GitHub uh, issues, or whatever. Or you can simply run this, these two commands in your computer and you'll start using React immediately. Now, the important part, what about mobile? Everything I said before is what well, well, I was talking about web development, web interfaces, web applications actually. But now, since you, you, you learned React, you can easily, or believe me when I say easily, start building mobile applications and well-performed uh, coded mobile applications. How? Before the how, these are the main challenges when we develop a mobile application. First, we have to build and install for every change we do. When you do native mobile applications, every time you do a change in Objective-C or in Java code, you have to rebuild your code and run it again on a simulator or emulator or a real device, just to see the, these changes. The second challenge, of course, as I mentioned, different environments. You have to set up an environment for building a, an, an iPhone application or an Android application, and different tools, of course, and languages. The imperative APIs, as I showed you before, it's, uh, it's not that hard, yet it, takes, it's, it consumes a lot of time to do the imperative way uh, APIs. And number four, it's, it's, a deb it's debatable. There's a lot of uh, solutions out there where you can build web uh, applications and then integrate them as a native applications in your, uh, in, an, in, 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 your in, in a mobile. It's called hybrid applications. There's a debate about the performance of uh, a hybrid application, but to conclude, it's it's using it's build mobile building mobile applications using web technologies. It's a very important thing. Google it if you want or do our research about it. And since we, we mentioned the, the performance, it's very important, the performance thing, it's very important for user experience. When you use a mobile application, actually everyone here is a user, uh, a, 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 an application user. We're users. When we use a mobile application, it's very important for, for me as a user to have as an easy, the, the easiest way to reach 
my goal of using this mobile application. If it's got if it got stuck or uh, if uh, the user experience is, is not that good, I'll immediately exit the app and uninstall it because it's not that good for me as a user. So it's very important. This is the first point. And the developer velocity. One of the great things about React, as I mentioned before, learning one thing, and then you can start building a lot of other, th other uh, things. W w what I mean is, learning React will give you the benefit of building uh, mobile applications, web applications, disk desktop applications. Anything you think of can be built. Uh, VR, AR, anything. Because it's a very powerful uh, solution out there. <coughs> Actually, as I mentioned, they're both important. So this is where React Native comes as a solution. This is what I was talking about. React Native is another solution to build mobile applications using the React technology. More code examples. All right. So using React Native, we solve these problems as Building and install and early changes is a very important, a, a beautiful uh, solution or feature in React Native where you can see your changes immediately. It's called instant reload. When we do a change on our code, you see it immediately on the mobile application that you're running. Uh, different environments, again, single environment for multiple platforms. Using React, you can build mobile applications on Android uh, or uh, iOS. Uh, desktop applications, web applications, etc. Imperative, of course, we, we, we're using declarative APIs. And uh, it's way better than the hybrid applications because in React Native, it's not, you write using web technologies, but yet it's like translated to a native UI. I'll show you in a, in a minute how, wh what I mean. Of course, no DOM web view. This is what I meant when, when, we say, when I said native UI. In, uh, in iOS development, if, any, uh, if there's a, any iOS developer here, the, the left side is React Native, and the right side is the native code of building interfaces in iOS. And this is the Android, another Android example. This is what I meant when uh, I said translated to native UI. When you do React Native on the left side, it gets translated to the right side as an Android uh, code. More, more, and more, more boring, uh, ticky uh, stuff. Under the bridge, uh, under the hood, sorry. The, it's it's all about a JavaScript engine. Uh, it, the, all the all of these beautiful things happens in under the hood using this engine that gets to translate the, the code you write in JavaScript to a native uh, code. And the last but not least, there's a, a very, uh, this is a very important example. Facebook, when they outsourced uh, React and React Native, they started using it internally. They built this Facebook Ads Manager uh, it was the first application to be built using React Native. They used it. Uh, they they used it. They used React Native to build it on both iOS and Android, of course. They used other solutions, open source solutions by Facebook as well, the Relay and the GraphQL. Uh, talking qu quickly and briefly about it, it's the the, the beautiful thing about the about this uh, application. It shares 88, almost 88 percent of the code on both Android and iOS, which is a very cost uh, efficient and, uh, of course, time efficient. Uh, there's a lot of similarity in terms of screens, uh, user experience, and other stuff. I think there are s some slides talking about this. Using the hot reload, the red box, inspect element on, on uh, other platforms. Sorry, I'm going quickly on. Uh, anyone have a, qu a question about these things? It doesn't matter if you build a backend using whatever technology you, out there, programming technology or programming language, it can communicate with React. Depends. 
if you built your backend using GraphQL. Have you ever used GraphQL before? Yes? OK, you can uh, easily integrate it with a React uh, project. Consider React as a solution to build faster interfaces. It's not a, a hard thing to learn. It's very easy to learn and very easy to integrate with other solutions out there. By the way, the, the Facebook application, it's a combination of multiple things. Some of the screens in the Facebook application is built using React Native, which is, this is the beauty of React. Even if you have a native application and you want to add a new feature, you can build it using React Native without affecting the other screens or the other features in, the, in your mobile application. So I don't know if I answered your question, but you can integrate it with any sort of backend uh, out there, whether it can uh, RESTful APIs or GraphQL or even SOAP. Uh, it's, you can do it and you can integrate with it. Any other questions? عندي سؤال حول الفيرشنز تبع رياكت نيتيف لانه الان راهم في الفيرشن 61.0.61 يعني يعطي انطباع باللي مازالوا في البيتا يعني ترو برغم انه يظهر انه وصل درجه من النضج ربما اكثر من فريم وركس اخرين اللي راهم في فيرشن ربما ثلاثة او ربعة صح ثانك يو ذيس از ا بروبلم اكشلي بي بي رياكت نيتيف ان جنرال ا لوت اوف بيبل سايز انه يو دونت هاف تو يوز رياكت نيتيف بيكوز اتس نوت ريدي يت يت ان ماي كومباني وي يوز رياكت نيتيف از ذا مين فريم ورك تو بيلد موبايل ابلكيشنز But how we maintain our applications is the most important thing. What Mahfouz mentioned is React is not mature enough now. It's version uh, 0 0.6, 1. something, and it's not stable. Yet you can use it as a developer if you keep updating it. To answer your question, comparing to what you got from React Native as, as a solution uh, and cost-wise, cost instead of having iOS and Android developer, there's a huge cost difference between this and that. You need another developer to maintain this application. You need to keep up with the uh, packages updates. When there's a new release, you have to update it. You don't have to leave it. If you leave it, you're lost. Because if you change, if, if you do an update or an upgrade from a version to another one, And there's a huge difference. It will take a lot of time, and it will cost you a lot, as as as, as in time or money. So, ضروري إنك ضلك تعمل update من أول بأول. كل ما يطلع في إصدار جديد لازم أنت تعمل update على ل لل mobile application تبعك. تمام. Thank you very much. If you have anything in mind, I saw Albert coming here, and I'll be present. Also, the two of them, inshallah. Thank you.